Um, Jesus goes on and he elaborates what the salvation fundamentally consists of. Here it is. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Salvation. You know when the angel came and said, Joseph, call your son Jesus. I don't know if Joseph argued back or not, but he gave the explanation in Matthew 1, 21. Call him Jesus because he will save, save his people from their sins. Right from the beginning that baby was there not to be a moral ideal, but a saviour. Salvation, meaning what? Salvation coming to you how? Well, to the sheep, the shepherd, the gate was two things. To the sheep, the gate was, firstly, safety at night. The whole point of the sheepfold is to be able to come in to rest in peace and safety. Protected there for the night, through the gate, into a place of safety, to be saved. The whole point of the sheepfold is to be able to come in, lie down, rest in peace and safety. But if you just stayed in the sheepfold as a sheep, how would you get on? How long would you last? Not long. The die of hunger. Thank you, Caleb. Absolutely insight. But probably thirst first. Probably thirst first. Yeah, it's difficult to say thirst first, isn't it? You'd probably die of thirst first, uh, and if you didn't, you'd die of hunger. Well, that's the whole point, you see. You come in through the gates to be safe at night, and then you go out, says Jesus. You come in and go out and find pasture. You've got to be able to get out and about in the care of the shepherd too, so he can lead you to what you need and where you need to be, walking along behind him. And there's where the second part of salvation comes in. It's safety at night, and it's pasture by day. Nourishment by day. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. See, salvation includes and incorporates restoration of soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. You are with me. You rode in your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. See, when the shepherd's there, the sheep can go out in the place where, the, where there are wolves roaming about and where there are foxes about because the shepherd is there all the time to look after them. And when they've been out there and they've eaten and they've had their fill at night, then he takes them back and he puts them in the sheepfold and they have a night of safety. Here's a picture of salvation. I'm the gate, says Jesus. I'm the one through whom you go in and come out. You find a place of safety for the night. You find a place of nourishment under my protection in the day. I'm the gate, says Jesus. Now, <coughs> we refer to predators. The people of Jesus' time were under threat. They were under threat from thieves. Here are the implications then in verse 10. Jesus is spelling out the meaning of what it means for him to be the gate through which salvation lies. He talks about his predecessors. They were thieves and robbers. He talks about the genuine gate that he is and what that has for them. And then he talks about the implications in verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. There's the implication of him being the gate. The gate is so important for the sheep. People of Jesus' time were under threat. They were under threat from military religious, militant religious extremists serving themselves, seeking a following, who would wreck and ultimately reap so many of their lives in combat. They were also under threat from the thieves in a religious establishment, who far from laying down their life for the flock of God, were serving themselves at the people's expense. Those people's eternal cost gave them religion. Gave them ethical codes of great erudition and immense complexity. But they didn't gatekeep the flock of God so that they might have life and have it to the full. Safe, sheltered, well led, well fed out in the desert in the presence of enemies, but protected back to a safe place by night to rest. What a picture of the sheepy good life. That's a good life for a sheep. Life to the ovine full. And Jesus is saying in this chapter that he is the gate next time the Good Shepherd too, that secures this sort of salvation into life in all its fullness. Those are the implications. I am the gate. I am the way into life, life, safe, 
well-fed life in all its fullness. So, conclusion. If you want to live a well-fed, safe life, then what you need is a saved relationship with the only true God. The gate to salvation is the way to go. Don't settle down for an ethical code, a set of values. That's not what it's about. People who misrepresent Christianity as being that in order to be able to attack it easier are guilty of a complete, possibly disingenuous category error. That's not what it is. That's not what it's about, what they're, what they're attacking. Don't let them get away with it. If you insist that biblical Christianity is actually about a living relationship with the gate and the shepherd, then, then those, those opponents of Christianity will berate you as a fanatic. They, they're going to berate you anyway, for one thing or the other. You might as well get berated for what it's really about, as what it's not. Jesus had the same from his own family. He was right all along. Why can't you be? You're going to get abused anyway, as either as anodyne or as a fundamentalist. You might as well get slagged off for the truth. Jesus is the gate, he says. There are others around. But I'm the gate. I'm the way in. And I'm the way out. To what you need. For life of the full. Rest. In safety. Nourishment. In safety. And the others who claim to offer that are not other world views in the teaching of Jesus but the thieves and the robbers that he's warning his followers about. They might be militant fanatics devoid of the truth. They might be pillars of the middle of the road religious establishment. But they are not the gate to salvation. In a safe, secure, fullness of life. That's Jesus. That's genuine Jesus. He's the one. He's the one.